New Hope Baptist Church and friends, welcome back to newhopecorpus.com and welcome to our uh, Sunday morning 11 o'clock service, uh, March 29th. And it's very exciting to see the number of people already subscribing to our church Facebook page. And uh, I think we already hit a milestone. Someone said over 100 already, and that's uh, thrilling and exciting. And we're adding things to our website and our Facebook page and our YouTube channel uh, each week as we have time. Uh, anytime you go to newhopecorpus.com, all you have to do to watch any of our videos is click on the YouTube icon there on our website. And if you have yet to watch this last Wednesday night's message entitled, You've Got Company, Thomas, uh, let me encourage you to do so. It is one of those must watches, uh, the type of message for what you and I are going through and our country and our world is going through right now. And us as believers, uh, a big thank you to Mrs. Baxter, to Brother Violet, to Brother Ruiz, uh, for all of their efforts and our online administrator, Joe Simmons, uh, doing just a fabulous job for us with our different sites. And uh, please join us again tonight at 6 p.m. for our Sunday evening service. Let me just say this, because of the fluidity of uh, the virus outbreak, uh, including here in Corpus, uh, and the shelter at place of residence that's in place right now for at least a number of weeks, we're going to continue to have our online services for at least the next few weeks. We will keep you posted as we promised, keep you updated. And so uh, if you will, take your Bible and go with me. We'll jump right into the message for this morning. Exodus chapter number 15, as you're turning in your Bible there, Exodus 15, I'd like to read for us one verse in verse number one. Exodus 15 and verse number one, please. Exodus 15 verse one. And the Bible says this, then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord, and spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he hath triumphed gloriously. The horse and the rider and his rider are thrown into the sea. And, uh, of course, we know the story here. Let's go ahead and bow our heads for prayer. We'll jump in. I'll give you a little background uh, to uh, Exodus 15, and we'll get the truth to you this morning. Uh, let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, please bless now as I speak. Bless as we listen. Lord, I pray you would meet the needs of your people here at our church. Thank you so much for your word. And dear Lord, no matter where we are this morning, Lord, that we can open your word together. We can break your bread. And Lord, would you please feed us now? Please feed us and meet our needs, I pray. Open our minds, open our hearts, open our ears. Lord, to see what the spirit of uh, the church, what the, the spirit would say under the church this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let me give you some backdrop. The nation of Israel was in bondage in Egypt before we get to chapter 15. Those years were very dark times, very hard, hard times for God's people. It was from the days of Levi up until the days of Moses. Now that's four generations, four whole generations. Exodus 12 and verse 40, the Bible says, Now the sojourning of the children of Israel who dwelt in Egypt was 430 years. So we know that they were in bondage. They were bondmen. They were slaves for 430 years as a nation. And then God calls on Moses. And, uh, and then we know about the ten plagues, and we know about the death angel, and we know about uh, the Passover, uh, and we know about the uh, Pharaoh letting God's people go finally. And then Pharaoh changes his mind after he let the people go. And then they chase uh, through the wilderness after the nation of Israel. And the Israelites now are trapped. They're trapped on the shores of the Red Sea. And then they see Pharaoh's army fast approaching them. And uh, at this point, they're fearful. Uh, they're, they're, uh, they're thinking that it's all over. They have no hope. Why did Moses bring us out here? Uh, I know we've been free, but now we're dead. And uh, then Moses holds up the rod in his hand and God parts the sea. And they all cross over on dry ground. And once the last person crosses, all of Pharaoh's army are now in the midst of the sea and God releases his hold on the waters and the waters swallow up Pharaoh and all of his men and they're all destroyed. God's people have gone from first 430 years of bondage, second 
uh, by the way, in sadness and hopelessness. Second, now they're uh, rejoicing and full of joy because they've finally been set free and being led of Moses uh, to the promised land. Then third, now they're facing fear of certain death at the Red Sea as Pharaoh approaches. And then fourth, they're amazed and they have amazement and laughter and singing and praising God. And uh, as God safely led them across or through the Red Sea and has destroyed all of Pharaoh's armies. And we find ourselves now at Exodus 15 verse 1. Look at it with me again. It says, Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord and spake saying, and you may know this by way of a song that we sing, and many of us sang this in church when we were kids. It, said, it goes, I will sing unto the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider are thrown into the sea. And we sing that. I will sing unto the Lord for he has triumph gloriously the horse and the rider are thrown into the sea and they sang and Moses sang and all the people of Israel sang and praised the Lord and my friend when the Lord does incredible things for his people I love to see how God's people react after God does wonderful things. How do they respond to the goodness of God? And I noticed in chapter 15, three reactions from God's people uh, in this passage. First of all, we see that Moses and all the children of Israel sang a song to him. They sang a song to the Lord. I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. It wasn't just the women singing. Uh, it wasn't just the special music groups. It wasn't only uh, the musicians who played and sang. Everybody. Moses couldn't even talk well. And Moses, could you imagine if he couldn't speak real well, that Moses was much of a vocalist? But yet the Bible says even Moses sang. Even Moses lifted up his voice and praised the Lord. See, the Bible tells us, let the redeemed of the Lord say so and sing so. And when you've been delivered by God, when you've been delivered, and uh, you, you have to sing. You have no choice but to sing. You have no choice but to praise the name of the Lord. And you just can't help it. You have to sing a song to God. And this morning, let me ask, are you one of the the redeemed? Have you not been delivered from bondage? Uh, then where is your song, my brother, this morning? Where is your song, my sister, in Christ? Uh, the song goes like this. Redeemed how I love to proclaim it. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed through His infinite mercy. His child and forever I am. Redeemed, redeemed. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed, redeemed. His child and forever I am. Redeemed and so happy in Jesus. No language my rapture can tell. I know that the light of his presence with me doth continually dwell. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed, redeemed, his child and forever I am. How about your song today? Are you singing? Are you happy? Are you rejoicing? Are you praising God? Are you remembered that you've been delivered, that you've been set free? Can you remember if you've been redeemed, the redeemed of the Lord, say so. I think of my blessed Redeemer. I think of him all the day long. I sing for I cannot be silent. His love is the theme of my song. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed, redeemed, his child and forever I am. Why are you singing so much during church? I came to hear preaching. I'm sorry, folks. I'm not sorry, but I've been redeemed. I've been forgiven. I've been set free. I've been let loose of my sin and its bondage over me. Hell will never be waiting for me. I can't help it. I've got to sing. 
I know I shall see in his beauty the king in whose law I delight, who lovingly guardeth my footsteps and giveth me songs in the night. Redeemed, redeemed, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed, redeemed, his child and forever I am. And no COVID-19 is going to steal my joy. I've been redeemed. And no down economy due to a pandemic is going to steal my praise to God. And no job loss is going to steal my song. I'm the redeemed of the Lord. My sins have been nailed to a cross. My sins have been washed away by the blood of the unblemished lamb. They're as far removed as darkness is from dawn in the sea of God's forgetfulness. Praise God, my sins are gone. My eternal record is spotless. My name is written in the book of life in heaven. My citizenship is not just in North America, but due north. My mansion is being built right now in the new Jerusalem by a master carpenter. My soul rests safely in the hands of the heavenly father. My older brother's name is Jesus. Jesus is all the world to me. My life, my joy, my all. He is my strength from day to day. Without him I would fall. When I am sad, to him I go. No other one can cheer me so. When I am sad, he makes Makes me glad he's my friend Jesus is all the world to me I want no better friend I trust him now I'll trust him when life's fleeting day shall end Beautiful life with such a friend. Beautiful life that has no end. Eternal life. Eternal joy. He's my friend. And Moses and all Israel found out that they had one incredible friend. So they sang, they all sang to him. Their song, by the way, was to the Lord because he had triumphed gloriously. Notice it says he had triumphed gloriously. Who threw the horse and his rider into the sea? God did. So they sang that he triumphed. And he threw the rider. And he threw the horse. First, we see that Moses and all the children of Israel, how did they react to being delivered by God? Number one, they sang a song to him. But secondly, we see that Moses and all the children of Israel rested. Rested. Rested in him. They understood that if God was their deliverer from Pharaoh's grip, then God would also be anything else. Anything else that they needed so they rested in him they found a quiet that word rested means they found a quiet place in their mind they found a quiet place in mind and body and they found it in him nothing going on around them nothing affecting their lives would disturb them because now they were resting in him in him are you at peace let me ask you the question this morning are you at peace right now in your life rest in him. Are you panicked and living in fear as you see the number of corona cases and deaths in the United States continuing to climb? Rest in him. Have you been delivered from your sins? Have you been delivered from death? Have you been delivered from the fires of eternal hell? Then let's all decide now that we're going to rest in him for everything else. Amen? Everything else. If we have been delivered and set free from the fires of eternal hell, then we can rest in him and trust him and find peace in him for everything else. 
In Exodus chapter 15, the people of Israel made it alive to the other side of the Red Sea and decided to rest completely in God. Notice in verse number 2, He has become our strength. He has become our song, our salvation, our God, our habitation, our dwelling place, our exalted one. In verse 3, He fights for us. He is our man of war. Verse number 6, His right hand has become our power over the enemy. In verse 7, He is great. He is excellent. He overthrows those who rise up against us. His anger is stirred against them. Verse number 8 says, And with the blast of thy nostrils the waters were gathered together. The floods stood upright as in heap, and the depths were congealed in the heart of the sea. Notice here, they said, If God just blow, blew his nose, and by blowing his nose, God parted the Red Sea, then we can rest in him. If he can sneeze, and by sneezing, divide the waters to save us, we can rest in him. In verse number 10, he says, Thou didst, They sang, Thou didst blow with the, thy wind, and the sea covered them. They sank as lead in the mighty waters. And what they were singing is this, If all God had to do was blow like blowing out the candles of a birthday cake, or blow like blowing up a birthday balloon, and the waters of the sea drowned the enemy, we can rest in him. In verse 11, they tell us why they can rest in him, because there's nobody like him. Nobody. They say there's no God like our God. His glory, his holiness, his wonder. He does things that no other God can do. In verse 12, they say, Thou stretchest out thy, hand, thy right hand, the earth swalloweth them. What they were saying was, Moses and the nation of Israel, they're reminding us today that all God had to do was scoop out of the waters of the Red Sea into his right hand and take those waters and dump those waters on top of the king of Egypt and all his men, and they were all gone forever. They said, if God could do that with his right hand, we can rest in him. In verse 13, it tells us, they tell us they didn't deserve God's mercy. They were saying, we, didn't, we don't deserve the mercy of God. We deserve God to punish us because of our sinfulness. But God chose instead to look past our sin and guide us with his merciful hand. How can we not, because of God's merciful hand leading us, how can we not find rest in him? In verse 16, the Bible says, Fear and dread shall fall upon them by the greatness of thine arm. They shall be as still as a stone till thy people pass over, O Lord, till the people pass over which thou hast purchased. They are reminding us, notice verse 16, they say, Our God is so strong that with one arm, his right arm, God held back Pharaoh's men, until God saw that every last one of his people had made it over from the, sh the shore or the floor of the Red Sea over to the other side. God was saying, or they were saying, God in one, one eye, with one eye was keeping track of and holding back and making sure he knew exactly where Pharaoh's men were. And with the other eye, he was making sure that each and every individual child of his was safe. And then they said, well, how can we not trust him and rest in him for everything else? Verse 17. Look there with me, if you will. It says, thou shalt bring them in and plant them. Now he's talking about his children, the nation of Israel. I will bring them in. Thou shalt bring them in and plant them in the mountain of thine inheritance, in the place, O Lord, which thou hast made for them to dwell in, in the sanctuary, O Lord, which thy hands have established. There's a whole lot to unpack there, but notice quickly, by delivering them, God was reminding them as he delivered them across the Red Sea that he had already promised them a, a, a place, a dwelling place that he prepared for them, that he had built for them. And we know that's the land of Canaan. And he was saying, I've got an inheritance for you. When he protected them and delivered them uh, from Pharaoh and his army and across the Red Sea there on dry ground, he was reminding the children of Israel how that their own dwelling place was waiting in a place that God's hands himself prepared. How could they not want to find rest and trust and believe and peace in him? My brother or sister, this morning, we have an even better place of rest than Canaan land. You and I do. 
as his sons and as his daughters. Can you almost see it? That other place of rest? It's just in sight, my brother. It's just in sight, my sister. Beulah land, I'm longing for you, and someday on thee I'll stand. Where my home shall be eternal. Beulah land, sweet Beulah land. I've got a mansion just over the hillside. In that bright land where we'll never grow old. And someday yonder we will never more wander. But walk on streets that are purest gold. Oh, they tell me of a home far beyond the skies. Oh, they tell me of a home far away. Oh, they tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise. Oh, they tell me of an unclouded day. Oh, the land of an unclouded day. Oh, the land of a cloudless day. Oh, they tell me of a home where no storm clouds rise. Oh, they tell me of an unclouded day. Often I've watched the clouds up in the sky. Always I've heard they were many miles high. Then as they sailed out of sight far away. Oh, I said I'm going far higher someday. I'm going higher, yes, higher someday. I'm going higher to stay over the clouds and beyond the blue skies going where none ever sicken or die loved ones to meet in that sweet by and by I'm going higher someday Moses Went up in the mountain to pray. Glory came down while alone there he stayed. But he came back. He just went there to pray. I'm going higher. Much higher someday. And soon will the Savior appear. Bless his name. Someday this earth will be all wrapped in flame. Then as I see the fire mounting so high, I'm going higher beyond the blue sky. I'm going higher, yes, higher someday. I'm going higher to stay. Oh, over the clouds and beyond the blue sky, going where none ever sicken or die. Loved ones to meet in that sweet by and by. I'm going higher so. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28, Jesus says to come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Beloved, we have a rest in him this morning. He has given us rest from our sins. We rest in him knowing we also have an eternal rest. A place that he's building with his own hands. There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. Once they were delivered in Exodus chapter number 15, we find that the children of Israel, once they were delivered, we see that Moses and all the children of Israel sang a song to him. And then we see second that Moses and all the children of Israel rested in him. And then third and last for this morning, after their deliverance, they couldn't help it. We see that the children of Israel, are you ready for this one? The children of Israel, they danced before the Lord. They danced unto the Lord. 
In Exodus chapter 15, verse number 20 and verse 21, and we see in our story that all the people had been singing this song of God's deliverance and resting in Him and praising Him for all that He had done for them. And all of a sudden, while they're singing that song, all of a sudden, right in the middle of their song to the Lord, it says that Moses and Aaron's sister, Miriam, gets up and grabs a musical instrument. And the Bible says, and Miriam the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took a timbrel or a tambourine, took a timbrel in her hand, and all the women went out after her with timbrels. And what does the Bible say? What did God put in his word for us to see that happened? It says, with timbrels and with dances. And Miriam answered them, or the other women of Israel, she answered them, Sing ye to the Lord, for he hath triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider hath he thrown into the sea. Let me explain the story quickly. We understand Miriam and the other women of Israel, they're all singing and praising God. They're singing with the men. The whole nation is singing this song. As they're singing this song to the Lord, don't miss this, to the Lord, to God, in praise, because He has delivered them. She grabs an instrument, and as she's grabbing an instrument, the rest of the women of the nation of Israel also grab an instrument, and they begin following Miriam in a line, if you will, following Miriam all around the camp. Miriam is like M Maria von Trapp leading the seven children around the hills of Salzburg, Austria. She turns and faces the rest of the women of the nation of Israel as they follow her, and she leads them in the song. Notice the words in verse 21. She tells the other women, Sing ye to the Lord! For he hath triumphed gloriously, the horse and his rider hath thrown into, he has thrown into the sea. And as she leads the women around the camp, they are all playing their timbrels or their tambourines and singing this wonderful song. So they're singing the same song. They're just singing the same song that the whole nation was singing, that Moses was singing. And then it says, while they were singing and while they were playing their instruments, what else were they doing? It says at the very same time that they're singing this song of deliverance and playing their instruments, they weren't just walking around the camp following Miriam. No, they were too thankful. Hear me now. They were too thankful to God just too thankful to only just walk through the camp too thankful to God for their deliverance they were dancing as they followed her dancing who were they playing their instruments don't miss me now and don't misinterpret what I just said because all I'm doing is telling you exactly what the Bible says and we're trying to learn uh, what reaction they had for being delivered from their enemy and saved by their God what was their reaction to the Lord we see here who were they playing their instruments to they picked up their instruments they were playing those instruments to who to the Lord who were they singing to the Lord and who were they dancing to the Lord. Dancing to the Lord was very common in Bible days. Stay with me. Never with the world's music. Never to stir sinful passion. Never to stir up man's flesh. Never to promote sinful behavior. But dancing to the Lord and before the Lord was common in Bible days. Psalm 194, one nine, I'm sorry, Psalm 149 and verse number 3, the psalmist says this, Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with the timbrel and harp. So David says that the dance was to praise God's name while singing praise unto him. 2 Samuel chapter 6 verse 14 says that David danced before the Lord with all of his might. My friend, I see here that David, the man after God's own heart, danced with all his might before the Lord. His dancing was for God and it was in the presence of God. 2 Samuel chapter 6 verse 16 tells us what provoked David. 
What provoked David to want to dance? The Bible says, and as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michael Saul's daughter looked through a window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord. You understand here, we don't want to take the Bible out of context. We don't want to condone worldly behaviors that are going on out in this whole world of ours and then say, well, the Bible says this about this. No, understand that David danced and leaped before the Lord. But why did he do that? The presence of God had returned to God's people. The Ark of the Covenant had been returned from the land of the Philistines. And now the presence, the Ark of God, was back with his people you see, when the very presence and power of God returned, David was so overcome with joy, so overcome with thanksgiving to God, that he couldn't contain himself. He broke out into dancing and leaping before the presence of God. I was thinking this, by way of application this morning, wouldn't it be wonderful if God's presence... Wouldn't it be a wonderful thing if God's presence would return to you and me? So we could leap and dance for joy before the Lord like David? Like Miriam and the women of Israel did? That way, even during the days of coronavirus, we could all become people of joy again? We could all become people of praise again? We could all become people that had our laugh and our joy and our song again? If only we could get God's presence back then we could have what they had. Oh, wait a minute. I just thought of a Bible verse. Matthew 28, 20. Lo, I am with you always. Well, I thought of another Bible verse. Hebrews 13, 5. I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. I thought of another Bible verse. Romans 8 and verse 38. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Our Lord. So it sounds to me like the Lord's presence never leaves us. After we get saved, after we get delivered, according to what I just read, according to what we see in God's word, once we have salvation, once we've been delivered, sounds to me like the Lord's presence never goes away. But wouldn't that mean that if I wanted to, I have every reason already and always to sing and dance and leap before the Lord. When David and Miriam and the women of Israel danced to the Lord, you know what it means? When they danced to the Lord, it means that they leaped into the air. That's what it means. Many times it is leaping measured by a tune that is sung or played with an instrument. The word dance in the Bible is jumping and leaping into the air to praise God for what he has done for them. So when you find someone dancing in the Bible, they're so overcome with thanksgiving and joy and, and, and being delivered or God doing something for them. They're so overcome with thanksgiving that they cannot contain themselves and they jump and leap and praise God. Remember the lame man in Acts chapter 3 laying at the gate at the temple, which is called beautiful. Then Peter says, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple. Notice what the lame man, after his deliverance, after his healing, it says as he went into the temple, walking and leaping. And praising God and all the people saw him walking and praising God. Do you understand? God healed him and how did he respond? He leaped and praised God the same thing that David did. He leaped and praised God the same as Miriam did and the same as the ladies, the women of Israel did when they were delivered by God. You and I, today we have the presence of God and we have it always. 
all away. And yet some Christians are going to let COVID-19 steal their laughter. Some Christians are going to let COVID-19 and the effects of it steal their merry heart, steal their praise, steal their dancing and leaping and singing before the Lord and to the Lord. We were at our house playing apples to apples after dinner the other night. I needed one more green card. I was one away from when all I needed was five to win and I, was, I had four. The clue was announced and the clue was this. Frightened, panicked, fearful. I looked in my hand and I had the perfect card. I knew it. I had the perfect card. I had it. It goes perfectly not only with the words fearful and panicked and frightened, but it also goes perfectly what people there with our family at the table, what our family is thinking, what the rest of the world is feeling right now. So as all the cards are being read, I get out of my chair and make my way toward the hallway and toward the entryway of the house. And I start before the card that was chosen of all of our cards, before it was even picked by the one reading off the clues, I started going in to my little victory dance celebration. <laughs> Arrogant, I know. The person reading the card pauses, looks at the green card again, frightened, panicked, fearful. And then as I'm looking over my shoulder from the hallway, lifts my card in the air and says, I'm going to go with the end of the world. I don't know if you're a baseball fan like I am, and I grew up a baseball fan, grew up a Dodger fan. My parents, my father's from Los Angeles, and I grew up listening to the Dodgers in the, in the, uh, in the early mid-80s, all the way up into the early early 90s but uh, if you've ever seen the world series where joe carter for the blue jays hit a home run twice to win the world series and you see uh, kirk gibson back in 1988 when he hit that home run in game one off dennis eckersley you see them leaping around the bases as they're leaping and in victory as they won the game and in carter's case won the world series let me just say this you never seen someone dance and leap unto the lord like was seen the night that I got that card the other night to win the game. I mean, you should have seen me with all the grace and the height that I reached when I leaped and the moves that I made and the rhythm that I possessed. All in glory to the Lord. <laughs> Ecclesiastes 3, 4 says these words, a time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance. See, my brother and sister, we are children of God. We're, we're overall the child of God. We're his sons, we're his daughters. And I don't care what a virus may do to me, it's still a time to laugh right now. It's still a time to leap. It's still a time to dance and sing and praise God and have joy before the Lord. It's still that time. Ecclesiastes says a time to weep and a time to laugh. The other day a flying bug got into our house. <laughs> and the ladies and maybe a boy or two turned from laughter to weeping and mourning. We were fortunately able to find a man in the house so that man calmly went into the garage to find a sturdy chair that could hold approximately none of your business 200 and th anyway he calmly located a perfect weapon and very calmly with a steady hand and with perfect precision hit the target dead center the weeping turned to laughter again and the morning to dancing. Friend, you have the presence of God if you're saved. Are you saved this morning? Then you have his presence. And the psalmist told us this, in God's presence is fullness of joy. Joy. Psalm 16 and verse 11. Don't lose 
your joy now. It's there. It's within you. It's one of the fruits of the Spirit of God who is sealed inside of you. The fruit of the Spirit which dwells in you are these. Love, joy. I love Ecclesiastes 10 and verse number 19. It says a feast is made for laughter. A feast is made for laughter. Mrs. Baxter made us a small feast last night at the house. She made meatloaf and vegetables and buttered bread and mashed potatoes. I mean, praise be to the Lord, all glory and praise to the Lamb that was slain. I mean, we had a small little feast over at our house. It was wonderful. We then cleared the table and played our favorite family game that we play. Hannah, Andrew, and Luke could not stop laughing during the game. No game is supposed to laugh, last an hour and 30 minutes. I mean, that's, I'm 49. My wife is married to an old man. They just started laughing. And uh, they couldn't stop. They just kept cutting up and they kept talking and just going on and on. And they slowed the game down and they really slowed the game down. They wouldn't stop that one game, an hour and a half. See, it was a time of laughter at mom's expense. It was a time of laughter at dad's expense. Luke was the prankster who kept things going a number of times. He'd just keep things going. Mom said to me, he is his father's son. It's payback for all that you put Oma and Opa through. It's just payback. As families, we eat together. And that's a time of laughter. It's a time to rejoice. It's a time to enjoy each other. It's a time to praise the Lord. Please let God help you. Please. Job said, God fills my mouth with laughing and my lips with rejoicing. My tongue with singing. You and I have been delivered. And you and I have the presence of God. So sing to him. Rest in him. Dance and leap for joy before him because you've been delivered. Praise him. Rejoice in him. Laugh and be happy in Jesus. A time to dance. Corona, you aren't going to steal my praise. Corona, you are not going to steal my joy. You're not going to steal my laughter. You're not going to steal. You can't. Because I've been delivered. And because I now and always have the presence of the Lord. Would you bow your heads with me, please? Our Father, we love you. We thank you for the truth of your word again today and how it speaks to our heart. Dear Lord, thank you for the reminders that we heard from the nation of Israel, how they sang a song of deliverance. Dear Lord, how they showed us what it was to react as ones who have been delivered. Thank you, Lord, for your ever-present spirit that lives within us. Lord, may we not let this virus and those things that are coming or will come our way because of this virus may they not steal our leap may they not steal our joy may they not steal our happiness may they not steal uh, our victory we have been delivered and we have a God who never leaves us and a love in Christ Jesus our Lord that we will never be separated from. Lord, we pray, praise your name and we thank you for your word. And Lord, bless your people. Bless them. Meet their need. Lord, use this truth. May we carry this truth with us from now until you come again. And especially in this time of uncertainty, may others see those at New Hope Baptist Church and those who name the name of Christ people we haven't let something else around us steal what we have. 
that's already ours, that we already have in our possession. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And we'll see you right back here tonight, 6 p.m. sharp. We'll see you for our uh, Sunday evening service. Thank you for being with us. God bless you. Talk to you soon.